All right, Sight Shield is our next one. Red Alert! The <laughs> National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for Northeast Harnett County in Central North Carolina, South Central Wake County in Central North Carolina, Central Johnston County in Central North Carolina until 5.30 p.m. Does that apply to us? Where do you shelter in this building? These are some serious questions. This is why these are some serious questions. This is my church in Huntsville, Alabama, November 15, 1989. A, an F4 tornado came through and tore up this church and a whole bunch of other stuff, killed 21 people, and fortunately, they were able to do an organ transplant and save the pipe organ from the church. <laughs> Same storm, my brother's two-story elementary school. You may notice that it is not two stories anymore. These people need to take cover. You need to take cover when there is a tornado warning. Here is the tornado warning polygon that I just read to you the first part of. So when they issued that alert, they, they mentioned Anger. Did, who, who knows where Anger is? All right, well, that's some of you. And, and, and here's where Anger is. Now you know where Andrew is, right? Because you know where you are on this map. But that's because you're smart people and you know where you are. All right. But suppose you are one of these visitors. I saw a guy from the other side of the Atlantic Ocean just a minute ago. He probably does not recognize his location on this map. Notice that this polygon does not observe the political boundaries. Mother Nature doesn't much care for our political boundaries here. That makes this challenge a little harder. Makes for some confusion when the tornado warning is issued. It makes it harder to keep up with whether you're in or out, whether you need to shelter, whether you don't. This is the answer. We're gonna save some lives here. We're gonna save lives by telling people only the, one, the warnings that they care about, not the ones that are for the whole county because if there's a tornado warning in Andrew, God bless them, but I don't have to do anything right now. That's the whole point. This is turning the relevancy of a weather radio from the same as a car alarm to turning it into more of a smoke alarm. When the smoke alarm goes off, you've got to do something. You've got to turn off the oven or you've got to get out of the house. You've got to do something when the smoke alarm goes off. We're making it so that you have to do something. And by doing that, you increase compliance with the warnings. By increasing compliance with the warnings, you get people sheltering when they need to shelter, and that really helps. You also save time. You don't shelter when you don't need to. So this is great for the workplace at Red Hat. If you shelter everybody at Red Hat for tornado warning and Andrew, they're gonna come after you. <laughs> this is the flagship product. This is the Raspberry Pi that sits at a fixed location at Red Hat in this building, somewhere else. <coughs> it knows its location. It listens to the weather radio <coughs> transmission as a backup to the internet transmission. The weather radio transmission only includes the county data. The internet provides the polygon and the vector for the storm so that you can issue a warning that pertains just within like 15 minutes of where the storm's arriving and where it's leaving. Who needs this stuff? Anybody with a big roof? Have you ever seen the pictures of a gymnasium? After the storm comes through, oh my gosh, this was a shopping center the day before this picture was taken. It's not anything anymore. And I can think of quite a few big roofs. This is where it's hot stuff. In this area, people know what tornadoes are. They sell tornado shelters in the shopping malls. I am not kidding. There's cookies and sunglasses and tornado shelters. I'm, I'm not kidding. That, that I've seen it. That's what goes on in Tornado Alley. This is open data. This is from the National Weather Service. They issue these tornado warnings. They want people to consume them right away. This helps to consume that data right away. This helps to take that information and turn it into an actionable alert. Whereas ordinarily, people only take in action on this 
after they've consulted other sources of information, verified that it's near them, verified that they need to actually shelter, we need to make something that's actionable right away. Business plan, a whole lot like Red Hat. The idea is make this open source software. <laughs> I get the smoke alarm yep. uh, analogy. I like that. The, is, the, is the idea for people who do not have a smartphone, or is it more for businesses or individuals? I, I heard right. That so the, the product first is for businesses, and we want to do a site-specific alerting. My cell phone goes off. I don't know if that's where the power is. I don't know if that's where the other thing is. I don't know if, that's, if, if the storm is 45 minutes that way, if it's going to be here in 45 minutes, I don't need to do anything for 20. And then I need to shelter. So I need to know all those variables. I need to take all that into consideration before I say, okay, it's time to shelter now. Do you, do you have a, is it a device plus a subscription or is it yes. a model work out? Yes. So device plus a subscription, the idea is the subscription fee would be on the order of $1,000 a year. And that subscription fee... Uh, is in line with what they charge for fire alarm systems and things like that. So the fire alarm pull station is like twelve fifty a year, according to the price list for the folks that do it. So same kind of thing. Which one? Yep. So this is, I mean, we, we looked at a quarter of the commercial space in the United States and divided it by a Walmart supercenter and came up with uh, $16 million worth of opportunity there at $1,000 a year. Uh, and then for schools, we looked at it a little less expensive because they don't have any budget, and you know, so let's see if we can get it in there cheaper. Uh, about $12 million a year. Again, we did the same trick, divide by four and count the schools. Uh, USPS has about 8,000 retail spaces, uh, and then DOD has about 100,000 buildings in the area, in the red area. This is just a red one. How many of these units? Is there is there a metric for you know how many boxes? I'm just gonna call it a box number. Yeah. Uh, boxes per square foot that you know it covers. One per building. No, we need somewhere a box in front. No, you put it inside. It's it's like in a small office you put it at the front desk, and you have the front desk person relay the message to everybody else. In a big office you hook it up to the PA system if there's a PA system. In a gymnasium or some other place, you would have a PA system maybe that plays music or whatever else, you put it on that. Uh, so the more automated it can be, the better. Do you actually have a slide for user experience for the app that's been developed? A slide? Yeah. No, nothing to see, really. I can show you. There's how it works. <laughs> no, no, so, you, you, you see on your one page you have a user interface. That's why I asked. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I, I, I dropped that off. Uh, 